Good morning and welcome to another episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays. Today, we're upstairs. Today's topic of discussion is saddle tilt. Should you be tilting your saddle up or down? Can you use it as a way to avoid discomfort? And how do you measure saddle tilt if all saddles are slightly different? It basically refers to the pitch of the saddle. Uh, most, most seat posts have got some sort of adjustment that'll allow you to adjust the saddle either nose up and nose down. And I think that, what, that's what we're, going to be, what we're going to be exploring in this video is whether, whether it should be level, up or down. Some saddles you need to set up with a little bit of tilt because it depends on how they're actually designed. So for example, something like this Turnix, which has got a bit of a kick up at the back, same as like a Roman, specialized Roman. They tend to need a little bit more tilt applied to them because so you're going to so you get the, the actual seating area relatively flat. I think there's a really common uh, school of thought to apply lots of tilt to the saddle to alleviate soft tissue issues and I think that there's a there's a very serious problem with this uh, when when you apply lots of tilt to the saddle you create a slope and what happens when you put something on a slope yes that's how stable your pelvis is. When you apply a lot of saddle, to the, a lot of tilt to the saddle, you end up gravitating to the nose. There are a lot of other issues that are commonly associated with it. I am, I'm starting to believe that it's, it, it generates an overutilization of the quadriceps, so your your quads start enlisting posturally to stop you from falling off the front of the saddle. And if they're being, if your quads are being utilized posturally, they can't be utilized as extensors, not as effectively, at least. So. Basically, if you're having saddle issues, don't do that. Thank you, British Cycling, for that idiotic concept. Uh, so, generally, if, if you're getting, I think we've got to explore why people will start applying excessive saddle tilt. And it's usually as a result of, uh, like I say, soft tissue discomfort. There goes the power. For sake. For the viewers, um, we're having loads of work done in the shop again. We're here on a Monday. This is going to is this going to be launched on a Tuesday? We basically broke the viewers, didn't we? Because they they're all going, oh my god, it's on a Tuesday. I think we need to explore um, in this video why people have applied tilt to the saddles, and I think a lot of it stems from well, for actually it's for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, uh, it's as this, thanks to saddles like this, which are they, they lack any form of pressure relief channel. And I think I, I always try and relate bike fitting back to uh, you know a, a kind of prime primal element, whereby I mean my, my philosophy is that basically, well, it's not my philosophy; it's the fact. It's a fact. We didn't evolve to ride bicycles. We didn't evolve to sit on our genitals on hard pieces of foam. So I think when you when you sit on this on something like this, it tends to create compensation. The rider gravitates to the front of it, they sit rotated, they sit askew. One of the ways historically to alleviate soft tissue or genital discomfort has been to drop the nose of the saddle. Quite often that discomfort comes from uh, excessive saddle height. So when the saddle's too high, riders often experience quite a lot of pressure. But it's also down to the type of saddle. Something like this, you know, it doesn't have any pressure relief channel, so you, you're better off running Generally speaking, you're better off running something like this, which has has a has a pressure relief channel. And I think there are, there are, there are loads of other drivers for, for for discomfort in in the saddle area. So you know, excessive saddle height is one of them. Excessive reaches are very very is another very common driver for saddle discomfort. Insufficient starts, too, not enough starts. Uh, you know, no arch spot. I mean, we found using pressure mapping that you can reduce pressure going through the saddle by up to fifty percent just by administering arch support. So. Yeah, there are so many different drivers for discomfort. I think the takeaway uh, message from this video should be try and get the saddle more or less flat. I think one thing we haven't talked about though is what happens when you pitch the nose up. Never do that either. The reason for it is what it tends to do is uh, posteriorly rotate your pelvis. Okay, so what that's going to do is it means that you're, you roll your hips back to try and get soft tissue away from the nose of the saddle. This is very commonly done to uh, stop a rider falling off the front of the saddle. So quite often if the reach is too long or the, the, or the saddle's too high, riders typically, traditionally, gravitate to the nose of the saddle. So some individuals will pitch the nose up slightly to stop that from happening. And essentially all it does is it causes you to roll your hip pelvis back away from the, uh, away from the nose of the saddle to, uh, to try and get more comfort. But what, the, what that creates is 
quite a lot of uh, spinal flexion, so you, you shorten your spine essentially, which means reaching the handlebars is made more difficult. It also disengages the glutes, and frankly, it's just uncomfortable and also not really how a pelvis is intended to be orientated. So theoretically, you, you might expect lower back pain as well. Are there any circumstances where you would add a bit of tilt? Yeah, absolutely, because I think that what, if, you, if you set up a saddle like this with uh, zero, zero degrees tilt, you'll actually end up with it slightly nose up. And I think this is one of the slight difficulties is that uh, different saddles are designed to be set with different types of tilt. So something like my personal favorite, the Pro Griffin, uh, I tend to set these up with negative one degree of saddle tilt. My whole rant about excessive saddle tilt, really, it's, it's more than three or four degrees. But even in that, e even with that, there are certain saddles, so the Ergon SR, which we sell a lot of in here, I tend to set those up at about two and a half to three degrees of tilt of, of, of nose down, uh, because just because of the way that it's designed and the seating area of it is is generally flatter when you and when I when I'm talking when I'm saying two and a half to three degrees nose down I'm talking about I measure it across the two highest points where's that fucking thing gone awesome. you know, so for example we take your bike Fran and that's got 1.2 degrees of nose down but actually the middle did you make that what did you make that no this is actually a specific tool it's an extremely expensive uh metal plate with a 20 pound spirit level digital spirit level attached to it so people did just super glue one of these if you take a clipboard and an iphone which has got a digital spirit level in it put, put your put your clipboard over the two two highest points Use your, use your iPhone to, um, to, to get that spirit level, to get that level, to get that uh, reading, and, and, and there you have your, your, your saddle pitch. So negative, negative one to negative two degrees shouldn't really cause you too much problems. Again, it depends on the saddle, but any more than that, you're gonna start creating issues. I think the, this is it, different saddles have got different seating areas, and I think the only exception, and, and what you normally want is to get the seating area pretty much flat to offer you support. But if you, I think the only exception to that is probably the SMP. And I mean, there ain't a single millimeter of this saddle that's flat. This might be the one exception to my uh, no nose up rule, but I actually found sometimes needing to run these with the, with the nose slightly higher. But uh, I mean, again, generally with this saddle, you kind of want it pretty much across the two highest points. You want it pretty much flat. Is was generally my finding. I stopped using these on the grounds that I found it quite time-consuming to to get them set absolutely right. I also found I had to run them quite far forward because the seating area is so far back. But uh, in reference to one viewer's comment of one video we did recently is there a saddle that has more fore off adjustment than 15 or 20 mil this is one of them you know he's got like 30 or 40 mil of of, of rail adjustment so so yeah i mean I, I would still i would still try and keep it relatively flat i think that like i said earlier that the takeaway from this should be don't add loads of pitch to it if you're having saddle issues I would explore other elements of your fit or get a bike fit. Never apply excessive pitch to your, to your saddle. Uh, it's quite well known uh, in professional circles that, uh, that this was something that was applied quite heavily uh, to, to, to team athletes to, to treat issues. And I just, I can't, I can't see in any scenario where it actually works. I think one, it, it might be down to the fact that they've got an extreme front end, you know, very, very low front end, but why do you need the front end that low, that low in the first place? So I think it's fair to say the takeaway from this, do experiment, but just don't go too extreme. Most saddles are designed to be used flat. And if you're having saddle discomfort, it's probably from somewhere else in your position, not the saddle itself. I'll put a link down below to a video we did a while back, which I think was called Saddle Problems Aren't Caused By Your Saddle, because mostly they're not caused by your saddle. Thank you as always for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Leave a comment down below if there's any topics you'd like us to cover. Equally, if you have any questions, I'm also gonna leave a link to James's website if you wanna book a fit with him. And we'll see you guys soon.